Hi guys, today we're going to get started on our first assignment in Adobe Illustrator and it is going to be um, a pretty easy uh, follow along assignment where we're going to sort of get better acquainted with some of the tools of Illustrator and create a um, flat based on an image. So um, since we are utilizing an image, we're going to go to open and not create new. And what you're going to do is you're going to open up Polar Shirt JPEG. Okay? Now this can be find, found, of course, in this week's content in uh, Blackboard. And we're going to open it up. And here we get um, this lovely image of a Polar Shirt. Now what we are going to do is we are going to create a flat image for this garment. And this is utilized a lot of time in uh, the fashion industry. Uh, when we want to show different color options or try out different color options. Typically flats are created before the production process as a guide or intermediary between the designer and the production crew. But what we're doing today, um, we're going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to create a um, flat image or illustrator image of this garment which has already been made. Um, and of course this primarily for us is just to get us better acquainted with Illustrator. Um, but we would use these techniques in the fashion industry again if we wanted to try out or display different colorways or create a more streamlined sort of advertisement or illustrated advertisement or promotion for these garments. So what we are going to do is um, we are going to utilize this image as almost something to trace upon. So we're going to use the image as a guide for our illustration. So to do this, what we're going to do first is we're going to go over here to layers and we're going to lock layer one. Now layer one is this image. And I don't want to make any changes to the image. All I want to do is use it um, as a guideline to sort of quote unquote trace over my illustration. So I'm going to lock this layer and then create a new layer and we're going to be working on top of layer one on subsequent layers up here. We're going to start on layer two but we'll probably create, probably create a few additional layers as well. Um, just to show you how layer uh, working with layers and allowing your layers to work for you will create an easier time um, for you to create um, your illustrations. Okay. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I want to drag out a few guidelines to show me where half the image is. Now I'm going to show you, we're going to first show our rulers to do this. So sorry, go to rulers, show rulers. Once we have rulers we can drag out guidelines and I'm going to put one right in the middle of our garment. Now most garments tend to be symmetrical which means the same on the right half as the left half. Now this isn't 100% the same. No, if I want to adjust it I gotta unlock my guide. So I wanted to pump that back a little bit there. So I'm just gonna go to my guides and view and unlock guides. And that'll allow me to just, well, if it wants to snap, let zoom in and get it right in the middle there. There we go. That's perfect. Okay, so as I was saying, most garments are symmetrical. So both um, the same on the right and half, uh, right half and left half. Now this garment is different only in color. Um, in all other details minus color, it is the same. Um, that means we're going to utilize a technique that we're going to use a lot in creating flats. Um, and we're only going to draw half of the garment and then copy, paste, and flip for the other half. Um, this reduces the amount that we have to do by half and it ensures that we get a perfectly symmetrical garment. Now, when we begin to draw this, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to pay too much attention to every little wrinkle, every little sort of in and out of the garment. Um, I'm going to create a stylized version of this garment in my illustration. And this is important because when we do use flats, like I said, a lot of times 
They are used as an intermediary between the designer and the production crew. So what we want to do is we want to create a quote-unquote perfect image that create, uh, represents the perfect shape of the garment without little wrinkles, without it going in and out. So a lot of these things like, like take the side seam here, it kind of goes out and it goes in. The actual shape of this, especially because it's for a man, is perfectly straight. It's a perfectly straight line. This is not going to be part of the pattern piece that is cut, this little wrinkle here, this little bulge here. So we are going to ignore those and create a perfect stylized version of this. It's also going to give us a little bit of an easier time when we're drawing it. Okay, now that I have my layer set up and my guideline for where I'm going to stop and start my drawing, um, I'm ready to begin my illustration. And what I want to do is I want to do these basic color blocks first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my pen tool, and right now I have an invisible fill and an invisible stroke. That means nothing is going to actually show up. Now when I draw, what I like to do is create, use a black line so I can see what I'm drawing, whether it's highlighted or not, or selected or not. And we'll change this too because what we'll need to do is, is create different outline drawings too. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to change just the stroke to black. and keep the fill as invisible. Now this will allow me to see underneath the object that I'm creating as I go. Okay? So what I want to do, is so the first thing that I'm going to do is block out my colored shapes. Okay? So, and again, I'm going to use my image, and we can zoom in a little bit. Um, don't be afraid to zoom in. Um, the bigger it is, the easier it is for you to draw. Now, I'm going to do this entire shape here, and I'm going to pretty much almost disregard the collar here, and that's where we're going to get into layering. So I'm going to start right at the middle here. Click. And then, you know, it doesn't really matter in here because I don't see it. I don't see it until here when we get here. Okay, and then I'm going to click again. Now, you see there's a little wiggle down and a little wiggle up. But I know for a fact that my shoulder seam should be straight. Um, perfectly, it should be straight. It's a straight seam. It'll be cut straight. So I'm not going to try to replicate any of those, you know, puckers or wrinkles. I'm just going to go from high point shoulder to low point shoulder in two clicks and create a nice straight line. Okay? Now we do have a little bit of a curve in the armhole seam. And again, it's, it's a little bit diluted from the wrinkles. So I'm going to click down here and then just make a little bit of a curve that's going to follow what the armhole should look like without this wrinkle here, okay? Now because of that curve, I'm getting this um, subsequent curve. I don't want it, so I'm gonna click here again to get rid of it. We have a little drop down before we start here, and then I'm gonna go straight across. Again, I'm not gonna go up like this. I'm gonna go straight across because not only should we be creating our flat sketches, um, like the perfect seam, but we shouldn't be drawing our flat sketches like there's any body in it, hence the name flat. We get the name flat because these sketches are supposed to replicate what the garment is going to look like if it was perfectly laid flat on a table. And I know this is a straight line when it, the pattern is made, so I'm gonna go ahead and make that sh um, straight line. Now all I have to do is go back here and close my shape. Okay, and there's my first shape right there. Now what I wanna do is I wanna move on to my next shape, which is gonna be here. Now there's a seam here, 
and there's a seam here, but there's no seam in the middle here, so I'm not going to leave a black line there. Now, see there's a little bit of extra here, so I'm going to go down a little bit here just to keep the width of this stripe consistent. So we're going to start here and we're going to go straight across here. Now if I want to snap to a perfectly straight line, I can hold shift. So here I'm having maybe at a little bit of an angle, but if I hold shift, it snaps to a perfectly straight line. And that is what I want. And then I'm going to click right here. I'm going to bring it up here and then bring along this same path here. Okay, and now we're done. I don't need to close it because remember, I'm not going to create a seam right here. There isn't one. Uh, there isn't one here. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. And again, I'm going to do it perfectly straight. I don't want to connect it here. So I'm going to let it down here a little bit and I'm going to correct that later and then connect it down here because I'd like this to be a full shape. Now remember I'm going we have our white arrow. We can now snap that back right up in there. Now if this isn't perfectly straight or if it seems like it's kind of popping out a little bit here. So let's zoom in. Remember, zoom is your friend. See how it's sort of popping? I'm going to just poke it in and poke it in so we get a nice straight line. If we think again, maybe it's not enough. It needs to go out a little bit more. Then I can do that as well because it's not matching here. Let's keep this underneath the sleeve, just like so. I can maybe have that come out a little bit more. Let's bring this in just a little bit more because I don't think it's flared out too much. I think it's fairly straight overall. Let's bring this corner in just a little bit more. There we go. Okay. So it's looking good. The last thing we got to do for just the base level is the sleeve. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to go over this line because again, remember, all of these are going to be filled with color. And whenever we want to fill something with color, we're going to need to go ahead and make a closed shape. So the armpit is right about here. And again, I'm going to create a straight line. We can curve this guy a little bit. That's okay. Or you can make it straight. That's um, up to you. Click here so we don't get that subsequent. And again, I'm going to make this straight up until here and maybe just curve the shoulder a little bit. And now I want to just follow the same line that I created for my armhole seam right here until I get down and can close the shape. Okay? Now I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to show you what we've done without the image. Remember, we can always toggle our visibility of layers on and off to double check what we've been doing. And it looks like we've been doing pretty well. Okay, now what I want to do is, like I said, we only need to do half the drawing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my black arrow tool, make sure I'm on the second layer with all the stuff that I've done, and I'm going to click and drag out a bounding box. And in this way, we can make a multiple selection. So anything that's going to fall within that bounding box with my black arrow is going to be selected. So. I'll just show you again, click and drag, make sure it's big enough to include all of the shapes that we made, and then we're going to get a multiple selection. Now, from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy for the other side 
okay? There's a couple ways I can do this. It's all the same idea. Um, the first way, because I'll show you a couple different ways, but we can come to Object and hit Transform, okay? I'm going to go to Reflect in the Transform menu, which can be found in the Object menu, and we get this little dialog box. Now it's showing us which way we want to flip it. Now I want to flip it over this vertical line, like such. Um, if I were to do horizontal, it would be flipping it kind of over a horizontal line and I'd get, you know, something for down here. But this is what I want. We also get an option to set the angle of re reflection. Never really use this, but that's what it does. If you do want to set an angle of reflection and get sort of a uh, sort of skewed copy, that's fine. But for our purposes right now, we're going to select vertical. And what I want to do is I want to select copy. Now, what copy is going to do is it's not going to actually reflect this, these ones. If I hit OK, it would take these guys, let me just show you, and flip it there. So I no longer have them. Okay, we'll just undo that. What I want to do is hit copy. What it's going to do, it's going to copy this and apply the reflection on that copy. So there we are. We remain with the original, and now the highlighted version is our reflection. When you um, reflect over a vertical line, it will always align it with um, the original vertically. So I'm just using the arrow tool right now to slide the sky into position. And I have that nice guideline, so I know exactly where to align it and we can see like just like so. Now that I have these base colors I can start to go in and color them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this upper left hand quadrant which is yellow, grab my eyedropper tool and make it yellow. Okay? We can come over here select the upper right hand quadrant and make it blue. Let's go down here. Now what I want to do is, although it looks like this is all the same color, but as you can see the color varies because there's some shadow, there's some kind of noise in, in it, so on and so forth. So to ensure that this color down here is the same color down here, I'm not going to source the original anymore. I'm just going to source this one. Now I'm ensured that this color and this color are going to be exactly the same. Now let's just continue down here, lower right hand, and let's get our middle. We also got to do those sleeves. There we go. Now, before we get started on all the other little details, if you notice, this looks awfully like the back. And, and many times, the shape that we use for the front view of the flat is going to be the same shape we use for the back of the flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, with my black arrow, now click and drag out the entire um, illustration that we have. I'm going to go ahead and apply the reflection to this, because see, when it gets flipped, the colors get flipped. So I'm going to Oh, sorry, let me show you what I did. I went, I, I, so if I go a little quickly, it's, you know, I forget that i got to teach you guys. I can't just assume you know everything. So the other place to apply the reflection is just to right-click on your selection and in the drop-down menu, go to Transform Reflect. It's just a shorter way of getting to the object menu. So, um, like I said, when you have something selected, right-click it, and we get a lot of what we see in the object menu. It's just a little bit of a faster shortcut to get there. 
I want to reflect and I want to reflect a copy. Okay, there we are. Let's move it over. If you want to move faster, you can move the black arrow. It's not an issue. And now I have the base of my back view as well. And we can toggle on and off here to show um, what the image is looking like um, on its own. Okay, looks good. Let's now, since this is our base layer, let's go ahead and create a new layer. I'm gonna lock layer two, and I'm actually going to um, toggle the visibility of layer two off. And let's work on some of the smaller details like the collar and placket. And to do that, I'm gonna zoom way in. Now the placket itself is a rectangle. So let's go here and get a rectangle. Now I already have my blue. Now if you don't, again, I like to utilize um, the invisible fill. And we can keep the blue as my stroke, that's fine. Because again, I like to be able to see what I'm doing underneath until the very last bit. So I'm just gonna click and drag a rectangle. That's a nice rectangle for my button placket, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my ellipse tool and do some buttons. I'm gonna hold the shift key down, which is gonna give me a perfect circle. So there's button number one. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab it with my black arrow and copy control C and paste for the subsequent buttons. This ensures that the buttons are all the same size without a bunch of hassle. We can nudge everybody into place and we'll probably do a final alignment just in case they're not aligned, but I'm just gonna go they're probably looking pretty okay. Right over where the button placement would be. Okay, now let's work on this collar. And what we can do, see how I, I kind of was messy up here? That's okay, because my subsequent um, piece is going to be uh, over top of it. To ensure that, we can certainly just make another layer, but I'm going to put the whole collar and button placket on the same layer. I'm going to come here and let's start drawing it out. Straight here to the middle. Curve it around here. I'm going to do this in two parts, this part and then the middle part. So I'm going to kind of curve that like that and then get rid of the handlebar and do a nice full shape here. Okay? I want to adjust this. This is looking a little wonky. Remember, anything that you make, don't get frustrated because you can change any line, any curve that you make, you can change subsequently with your uh, white arrow tool. So don't bother going over. See, I didn't include that little wrinkle there. I can't come down here. Now again, we can grab this and let's transform it for the other side. Don't do too much work. Okay, let's see what it looks like without. All right. And we can also start to um, fill in. So I'm just gonna make sure all these buttons are aligned because they look a bit wonky. I wanna make sure this is in the middle of this guy. So that would be where that is. Okay, so let's make sure now all these are in the middle. Again, we want this to be nice and perfect. There we go, nicely aligned. You too. One more. Ooh. 
If you have trouble getting anything aligned or it looks a little off or it's not snapping the way you want it, just go ahead and zoom in and it'll be a little easier. There we go. Now they're all perfectly aligned. Let's add this as a visual, okay? And what we can do is even though layer two is locked, I can still utilize the colors on layer two. So I can start filling these guys in. Now, these were white buttons, so I'm not going to bother using the um, color picker tool. I'm just going to go ahead and put in white for the first one, and then I can just sample the button for the subsequent buttons, the first button for the subsequent buttons. And last but not least, button placket. Okay. Now let's go ahead and just finish off with the back of the collar. I'm going to go pretty straight across. Maybe just pick it up a little bit in the middle here. I'm not going to bother being super careful about matching here, and I'll show you why when we are finished, because of the, our ability to arrange on top of each other is going to allow me to not have to be super careful about it. This I'm going to go straight across, so hold that shift, and then come back right here. Okay. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create one more box right in here for that black area. And since we have basically already the outline, I don't have to be careful at all. I'm going to be a little clumsy and rely on my ability to layer these objects and arrange these objects to create the shape for me. So okay, that was black, so I'm going to make it black, and I can do it down here, or maybe just very dark blue. You can use the color sample um, tool as you want. Now remember how I was talking about arranging things on a layer? Now everything on this layer is on layer 3, or everything on layer 3 is, is visible right now. So I have things that are a little bit wonky because of how that they were arranged. Now remember that everything I draw is going to layer um, on top of each other chronologically. So whatever I draw first is going to be on the bottom, whatever I draw uh, latest is going to be on the top. So this guy right here, I want it to be on the bottom. So I'm going to highlight it, right click, go to arrange, and I'm going to send it to the back. And it's going to send it all the way to the back of the layer. I'm going to do that with this too. It's not going to create an issue yet, but once we start outlining it, it will. So I'm going to go ahead and send it back. It's only going to send it, uh, so every time I send it back, it's just sending it back one step because I still want it to be on top of this black one. Now, we have these lovely shapes. So I'm going to add the visualization of my original layer here. Let's get rid of this guy so we can see. Take away my layer here. And we are well on our way. Now what I want to do is I want to create a black outline for the seams. And I've already created all those lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, oop, let's unlock layer two so I can select what's on layer two as well. And for our stroke, I want a nice black stroke for everything. And this is going to show us where the seams are. It's going to help define the outline, so on and so forth. So there we go. 
oops, I see, I still have this popped up. So I'm gonna go here, right click, and just step it back until it's sitting where I want it to. Not bad. Now I don't have the black, um, let me pop off the guidelines so you can see it without the guidelines as well. So I don't have the black outline here, remember, because we never closed this shape. But look, I have a little bit of a gap in between the fill that needs to be fixed. So let's go ahead and do that. And I can fix that really easily just by selecting this and scooting the line out so I get a little bit of overlap between my two sides. Fixed. Excellent. We have the same thing that we need to do over here in both outline and fixing here. And we're going to do the back view of the collar here as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Bring this over, zoom in. Let's just patch up this here a little bit. Oops. Okay, we're going to make sure that we get those white anchor points or else the whole thing is going to move. Okie dokie. And those other white gaps should be fixed when we apply that nice black border. So let's go ahead and do so. going to change. Why are you not going to change? All right, let's try it individually. I'm not quite sure why it's not working. Time is a try. Let's try to apply it to everything. Here's so uh, down here it uses some things that you've like recently used. So let's just try that. All right. And now you work. Why you didn't before? I'm not quite sure. Um. So again, we are well on our way. Let's see what we got to do. We got to go ahead and um, do the collar here. I'm gonna create another layer for that because um. It's going to be on top of layer two. So let's just go away because we have a little bit of this sort of hanging down right here. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom way in there. We have a little bit of a stitch right here too. And we're going to go ahead and um, add a little bit of top stitch all the way around um, our figure uh, or our clothing. I'm going to add maybe a little bit down here for the hem, a little bit here for the cuff and a little bit here for this little loop here. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, this is pretty small, so if you wanna do the whole thing in one go, go, go for it. If you wanna do half and half, um, reflect it, you can as well. If you do the whole thing all at once, just make sure that you are going ahead and making it uh, symmetrical. So I'm gonna go ahead and Now I have this filling with a, mar a maroon, and you can kind of see why I like to keep it invisible, because you can't see what you're doing underneath. Let's just pop this back in here so I can create the right color. Copy and paste a, or let's transform and reflect a copy. I'll bring it out over here, and I'm going to stretch this out a little bit like this so it meets right there. OK. 
okay. Just take this whole thing and nudge it over a little bit, just so I get the middle of it on the seam that I created. This can be maybe stretched out a little bit too. All right, not too bad. Now we're working on layer four. Let's go ahead and toggle this off again. I want to create sort of this little loop here. Now it is half of an ellipse. So what we can do is we can use the ellipse tool. I'm going to just go ahead and do an invisible fill because I really do want to be able to see underneath this thing. Uh, I still have the black stroke. That's fine. I'm just going to open some, it up and try to match that curve best I can. If I don't do a good job, remember that I can always adjust it with my black arrow. Looks like it was pretty good there. I'm going to go ahead and match it right there. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to, so you can see a little bit, I'm going to um, go ahead and bring this out here. Now I only want this bottom part. Now I can easily just tuck this underneath right here. But this is actually a really good opportunity to show you um, a new tool, um, which I actually, I didn't show it in the um, intro, but it is very, I use it quite a bit. So let's say I only want half this, right? I only want the bottom half of this. So essentially what I want to do is cut here and here and delete the top half. So hiding underneath this little eraser tool is what's called the scissors tool. And they should put the scissors tool on top because it's way more useful. I never use the eraser tool. I always use the cut tool, or the scissors tool, I should say. And I'm just going to click right here. And right here, we want to cut off that top. Now we can see I can move out this bottom half and delete away the top half. Now before I, I put this back here, I'm going to go to Properties, and while it's highlighted, I'm going to go to stroke and apply a dashed line, okay? Remember I was do showing you a little bit of an example here. I'm going to go ahead, I want an even dash for this top stitch, and I'm going to set it at about two points. Um, last but not least, I'm going to reduce the stroke to 0.5. A thinner stroke tends to look more like um, top stitch, especially if it's thinner than, okay, it looks like it could be a little bit shorter, so let's just burp, kind of scoot that in a little bit, maybe scoot it in a little bit here, and then even it out, So I know the middle's not in the middle, but remember, my middle was a little bit off right here, so we have it just like that. Let's double check, scoot it right where it should be. And fantastic, we have our top stitch. Now there's a couple other areas we need to put top stitch in. We'll need to put it on the cuffs right here. So let's do it on layer four because it's layered on top of layer two anyways. I'm gonna lock this, lock this because I don't want it to change. And really at this point, I'm almost to the point where I don't need my layer one anymore. Um, I just wanna double check that I'm making the width of the cuff accurate. And actually, I have a bit of the cuff sti sticking up right here, so I can use that. If not, I can always just toggle on visibility, toggle off to ensure that I'm making it the right length. I'm going to grab my pen tool, keep it just like this, and I believe my uh, dashed line should still be applied. click click and bend it to match that cuff and let's remember that we don't need to do extra work once I have one this can simply be copy and pasted over here put it into place and then these two let's do a multiple selection right click arrange or I'm sorry transform reflect copy and then shift them into place on the other sleeve 
do, 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 do. If that's not fast enough for you, you can use your arrow tool, but this will ensure it doesn't kick up or down. There we go. Now we've got that done. Let's go ahead and do our hem. Now the hem is straight across, so let's switch on over to just the line segment tool. So we haven't used it before. You can use the pen tool to do it, that's just fine. But this is a, a, a great way to make just a quick, easy, fast line. And what I'm going to do is click and drag to create the line instead of um, click and create acre points. And again, you can do this with the pen tool. There's no reason you can't. It's just an opportunity for me to show you another tool. So I'm going to click down here, just double check I'm making the width of it about accurate. And I'm holding shift to make sure that it's nice and straight. There we go. And as you can see, sometimes you get these sort of like guidelines popping up. Um, and you can probably infer what they mean. They're to help you align with different things. So see if I, I kind of come here, as soon as I'm in line with that line I just made, I get that nice little guideline saying, yep, this is, this is aligned. Um, this is the middle, so the middle line's here, it's guideline here, guideline to the anchor point right here, guideline to, you know, different things. So um, you can always utilize this. It, they, they are super helpful, a little bit of shortcut, so come down here instead of dropping down a guideline to make sure these two things are aligned. Well, first let's make sure that these are aligned. Yeah, for the most part, they are. So um, I can just start right here, easy breezy, because I know it's the same as the front, and draw it in. All right, now let's zoom out. Let's toggle the visibility of our underlayer. And you know what? It's looking pretty darn good. We have all of our top stitching. We have all of our elements that we needed. And so at this point, I can feel free to unlock layer one and drag it to the trash, okay? Make sure that you are finished. And at this point, we are ready to save as a finished version. Now, if you are going to save and you're in the middle of the project, say you're in the middle of this assignment and you need to save for later, you're going to file, save as, and save as a .ai file. If you are not finished, if you are finished, if you are at this point, you've deleted your layer one and everything you have is absolutely finished, what you're going to do is you're going to save as a JPEG. Um, it is going to be one of these uh, submission requirements that this be a JPEG. Now, saving as a JPEG is a little bit different than it is in Photoshop. You cannot go to save as. To save as a JPEG, and again, this is only when you're finished, when you're completely finished, because what it will do is it will flatten the whole image, it'll take your, your little paths, and everything away and and just record what it is um, visually. When you save as a .ai, so if you save as a .ai, it's going to save all your layers, it's going to save all your paths and objects and everything else. So when if you're not finished, you if you are not finished with the garment, uh, with the illustration of the garment, save as an AI. But when you are ready, when you are completely finished and you're ready to turn it in. You're going to go to File Export, not File Save As, File Export, and you're going to go to Export As. You're going to name it your name, Polo Flat. You're going to select from this drop down menu, JPEG. Okay? You're going to save it to your USB and export it. Um, you can do, I don't really care if you want to keep it medium, you can, um, your resolution, um, can be 150, please, because it's going to be really, really, really large images if you do it, um, 300, so, m like, medium quality, no less than medium, um, baseline is fine, um, no more than 150, 
If you want to do um, 72, that's fine. Um, there is no type, so it doesn't matter. Um, and then once you have your settings, your color mode doesn't matter, hit OK. And it will be saved. Double check, and then you can close and exit out of um, your VDI. So congratulations, you just finished your first project in Illustrator. And hopefully um, you found it fairly easy. Hopefully it was um, the best flat you've ever created. Um, and in our next uh, lesson, we're going to go a little bit more into creating um, flats, um, a little bit more traditional method of creating flats in Illustrator. And uh, we're going to go over, um, you know, some tips and tricks of creating flats on your own. Um, and you're going to go ahead and, and create your own flat so you get the opportunity to be um, a bit more creative than in this assignment. So I will see you then. Bye-bye.